ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery of R32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that tier list, as well as that like and subscribe button and that ding-dong Taco Bell notification bell, so we can keep on climbing up the 1,400 ladder, so we can hit 1,500 subscribers. I really do appreciate all of the support. So, for those of you who haven't been keeping up with the meta, maybe you've been taking a break this format, I wouldn't blame you, quite honestly. Um, we are moving into YCS Indianapolis next weekend. This is going to be the first YCS that we have a Legacy of Destruction legal and all the Tempai cards and all that fun stuff are going to absolutely be showing their ugly heads at this YCS. And of course, as y'all know, I've been playtesting like crazy. I'm going to be at the event. Be sure to come up and say hi. I would love to meet some of my subscribers, some of my viewers, all that fun stuff. I wanted to talk about um, what the meta is going to be like, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, well, Avery, it's just going to be, you know, uh, snake eyes. Like, what, what's the big deal? But there is some things I want to discuss, at least briefly, talking about Infinite Forbidden going into the national season. Because once we get Infinite Forbidden, that is definitely going to change the format. And unfortunately, I had all of this in a perfect order that I wanted, and then I put it in presentation mode and it screwed everything up. I'm having to use an OCG tier list, because uh, for those of you who don't know, maybe you're newer to the channel, um, I actually don't know how to make tier lists, uh, like actual like charts. So I just use whatever someone else has on the tier list maker site. Um, and sometimes it's OCG stuff, sometimes it's TCG stuff. Um, so we are basing this kind of off of the OCG, but we're just going to ignore all the OCG stuff. So anyway, with all that out of the way, we obviously got to talk about the big, bad, scary Whittle Bear in the room is Snake Eyes. And of course, before I forget that, we got to go through all these tier list charts because we got a bunch of new people on the channel. We got, of course, the tier zero, which is going to be Snake Eyes slash Snake Eye Fire Kings. We got the tier one, the tier two, Rogue, and our p -p 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 patented booty, booty, butt cheek category, which is where, of course, all of the big old bucket of liquid doo doo dog stain decks go. Stuff like your Cyber Dragon, Cyber Darks, uh, your Table 500 decks, all that fun stuff, right? Uh, so, yeah, of course, starting off with Snake Eye, Snake Eye, Fire King variants. I feel like pure Snake Eye or Cash Tier Snake Eye is just better than the Fire King stuff. Because the Fire King stuff, even though it's good and you've got stuff like Kieran that has untargeting, um, popping to like avoid things like Imperm Baylor, things like that, uh, Ghost Mourner, you name it. Um, the Fire King stuff you can brick, whereas if you get hit with Shifter, if you're playing Cash Tira Snake Eyes, you've got the Cash Tira cards to sit on so that you don't just auto lose as the Snake Eye player to something like a D Shifter. You at least have somewhat big bodies on the board. Of course, Snake Eye is going to be the deck to be even post Infinite Forbidden. I don't think that's really going to change. Um, of course, not every deck on here is listed because this is someone else's, uh, you know, tier list. But if you don't see a deck listed on here, feel free to mention it in the comments and I can tell you where it belongs. I can tell you right now, Drytron is not on this list because it goes in the booty booty butt cheek category. Even with the new support, it's maybe rogue at best. Cyber Dragon, things like that. I know I've got a couple people that really like Cyber Dragons that are sub to the channel. They go in booty booty butt cheeks. I'm sorry, Cyber Dragon hasn't done nothing since like, what, 2016, 2017, if I had to guess. Um, moving along with decks that are kind of more rogue, that's Labyrinth. Um... So, don't get me wrong, at YCS Rally, we did see Labyrinth get second place, and it maybe, just maybe, could have got first place. Um, obviously, we will never know, but had the player played it a little bit differently, he could have maybe won the YCS. But, regardless, I still think that Labyrinth is a rogue deck. Uh, something that a buddy of mine mentioned to me yesterday is that he feels like it's a pilot issue, where, even Joshua Schmidt mentioned this, where... He said that a lot of players play Labyrinth like it's a control trap deck when really it's a combo deck. So it, I feel like, especially Labyrinth more than anything, it comes down to the pilot of the deck, how well the deck does. But, like, just in general, I don't feel like that this deck is very good. I mean, you just have so many better options. Um, which, speaking of better options, we got fucking Tenpai, because Tenpai is broken AF. Uh, it was actually funny because I was talking with my dad the other day. Uh, because if you remember, he used to play 8-axis, and he would play that stuff on Master Duel, a.k.a. Master Shits, um, where, you know, you can give your opponent Kaijus, Lava Golems, activate Owner Seal, because Master Shits is just that bad of a game. You get back control of all your monsters and swing for game, make a Numeron Dragon, whatever. And I told him, I'm like, you don't even need to play that deck anymore. That deck is literally just irrelevant now, because we have Tempai. And Tempai is actually kind of a budget deck, like... Yes, it's better if you have a Trident Dragon, or, you know, ask a friend to get your Trident Dragon, right? But, um, it's, it's still a good budget deck, though. You don't always need the Trident Dragon. Like, right now, I'm messing around with a, yes, believe it or not, a 52-card Kashira Tempai Pile with, like, 19 hand traps, and it, it works out really, really well. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can build Tempai. Um, I've even seen some lists that play Pot of Desires, um, which... You know, not everybody is sold on. I can see the argument behind it as to why it's good. 
Um, but there's so many different ways you could play it. You could be, you know, main decking Labyrinth and side deck a Tempai engine. Um, you could be playing Tempai and side deck into Melodious cards. You know, Tempai is just such a versatile deck, and I do think the more that people side deck for it, the harder time that Tempai players will have, um, which can make it drop down. But whenever people just aren't preparing for it, or if the Tempai deck just opens up a boatload of hand traps, you're going to have a good time. It's, it's a great deck that can easily beat Snake Eye. Again, depending on how you open, because it is a linear deck. But, I mean, that's what makes it good. It's good at pretty much doing one thing, and that's OTKing just the ever-living butt cheek stains off of the opponent. Um, these back here are just OCG decks. We're not going to really worry about these. Um, let's see here. I, I want to talk about Voiceless. Voiceless is definitely Tier 1. Um, so there's a few different ways that people are building this, right? You have the pure version, which is very linear, where you're setting up the the two continuous spells, the non-targeting and can only attack rituals, and then the trap card that can pop stuff. Um, if you're playing the melodious stuff, you're playing 14 cards that are potentially bricks, um, but you have much higher of a ceiling, and you can end on a better board like Apollosa, Skull Guardian, Vortex Dragon. Like you can end on multiple negates that pretty much just guarantee you the win, right? Because no one's really playing uh, Dark Ruler, and most decks are just side decking evenly match right now if they're even playing it at all. Um, I don't feel that the Melodious Way is the way to play it. However, I do feel that Voiceless is a fantastic deck. It's extremely consistent. It can still play a good amount of hand traps. Herald of Orange Light being back at three makes this deck insane. Um, it's, it's actually kind of funny because I feel like Voiceless is just the ritual deck of the format and it's replaced Drytron. Um, and that's why I just feel like Drytron is now in the booty booty butt cheek category because it's like, why play Drytron? Okay, you can skip the main phase. Like, that card's good, but it's like, just play fucking Voiceless. Like... I feel like the deck is just better. Um, let's see here. Let's jump around a little bit. So Chimera. Again, similar to Voiceless, there's multiple ways to play it. Um, you have the Melodious cards, which again can be bricks. Um, but it's really good at what it does. And I think that as a concept of a deck, especially since it is getting more support um, with the Fiendsmith cards indirectly, um, and you also have Diabelle's The Original Sin being an illusion monster, so it's searchable. You also got Nightmare Apprentice. Uh, the Chimera deck being able to make the level 6 or whatever, uh, the one that rips a card out, I feel is so good, especially whenever you're putting your opponent down one card, and when they don't open up a blowout hand trap like Droll or Shifter, and if they do try and hand trap you and they don't know where the choke points are, which is, spoiler alert, just negate the Burfamet and you're fine, uh, or the Gazelle if they normal summon it. But like if your opponent doesn't know that, which not everybody does, you're going to be in a great position. Um, I just feel like that going second into decks like Voiceless, especially when they pop off, or even Snake Eyes, it just has a really hard time. But when you go first and you open up those good hands, you're going to be ripping a card out of the opponent's hand. Maybe you're ending on an Apollosa. Uh, the better of a pilot that you are with this deck, the more that you get rewarded. So it's definitely something that you need to have on your radar, um, which by the end of this video, we'll be talking about what decks I'm concerned about going into the YCS. Um, next up is Flunder. I'm almost tempted to put it in the booty booty butt cheek category, but solely because of the fact that it can play Shifter, I'm putting it in Rogue. But as I say in all these videos, it fucking loses to itself. Oh, and uh, a note on DDD, because we mentioned that in all of these tier list videos, uh, DDD would be going in the booty booty butt cheek category, and if you wasted $25 on an Excel spreadsheet for combos, you wasted your fucking money. I say that in every single one of these, and it always triggers people, and it's delicious. Um, I think that Centurion definitely goes in tier 2. King Calamity needs to be banned. I just saw where that happened on the Master Shit's ban list. Um, it's King Calamity the deck. You have the Horus cards. You hope not to break on the Horus cards. The deck is not bad. You actually have a pretty good Tempai matchup, especially if you're able to set up King Calamity because you just win. Um, but I, I really don't think it's anything higher than that. Um, branded... Oh, I mean, I feel like it's just gimmick puppet lock the deck, similar to Centurion. Like, just you drop out your, your Floodgate card. Why do I keep clicking the right click? Um, I, I gotta put it in Tier 2. I don't think it's as good as stuff like Snake Eyes and Voiceless. And I feel like that it just gets blown out by Tempai because of how many hand traps you can play. Like, if you're not making the gimmick puppet lock, I feel like you just kind of lose. Like, don't get me wrong, the boards it can make are great, but, like, you get farted on by a D-barrier and you lose. Like, and again, if you're not setting up gimmick puppet, like, what are you doing? It just, I don't know. I, I feel like it's maybe a tier 1.5, but as I've said before in the past, if you're putting something in tier 1.5, you may as well put it in tier fucking 2. Like, there's no difference. Um, 
Uh, th this this deck is garbage. People have been trying to play Orcus with the Thunder Dragon shit. Th this is garbage. I'm not even concerned about this at all for the YCS. If you're like X2 or X3 early on, you're going to see stuff like this. Rescue Ace. Rescue Ace, this has fallen off. I feel like it's Rogue. Like, even if Airlifter was at 3, I don't really feel like the deck would move much. Maybe to Tier 2, but it's like... I remember when Rescue Ace was all the rage with the Snake Eyes cards, but everybody's just moved to Pure or, like, playing the Catch Tier cards because it's just better. I don't feel like you really need the Rescue Ace cards. Like, there's just other better ways to play it. It's definitely not bad. You can definitely throw people off if they're not prepared for race. Um, but it's like, if you're already preparing for these other meta decks, I feel like you just get blown out. Like, Tempai is main decking back row hate, like Lightning Storm Feather Duster. So it's like, you're already a disadvantage, similar to Labyrinth, so... I just don't feel like it's much of a thing. Um, this is pure Melodious, I'm pretty sure, unless I'm just wrong about this fusion. I'm pretty sure it's the one that banishes and then brings them back. Melodious is absolutely tier one. This deck is insane. Um, yeah, like, if you don't know where to stop this deck, even if you do, like, what am I even talking about? If you Ash the Ostinato and they have another one, it's not once per turn, so you just get so punished. Like, I, I remember seeing a replay the other day on YouTube where... The dude opened up, like, I think three Ostinato. He activated the first one, his opponent Ghost Bell. He activated the second one, his opponent Ash. And he just activated the third one, and the dude Rage quit. Because, like, it's just disgusting. Like, uh, you have to stop the Baka with Moonlit Chill or Imperm, because that actually still negates it. But, like, when they just pop off, they get so much advantage. Like, you have to have multiple board breakers to even attempt to win if you're on Tempai. Like, it's it's a hard time if you don't see hand traps, or you don't see enough, or you just don't see Shifter. Um, let's see here. Sky Striker is... Pfft, I mean, they're playing it as a sub-engine in Tempai, but I feel like cash cards are just better. It's Booty Booty Butt Cheeks. Um, Runic is Booty Booty Butt Cheeks. If you're playing in the stun version, like, okay, you're, you're being a troll at your locals, congratulations. But if you're taking this to the YCS, or even Nationals post-Infinite Forbidden, I don't see you doing well. You're gonna have to win die rolls all day. Similar to, like, normal stun decks like Falsodyne. If you win the die roll, like, congratulations. Like, you won't have to go touch grass for the round, but... Uh, it's, no, like, the, the deck is garbage. Um, let's see, this is, like, I guess, Salad or, like, Fire stuff in general. Salad is very much Rogue. That's not to say it's bad. I actually feel like it's one of the better Rogue decks listed here. Um, it can definitely pants people. Like, one got, I think, top eight or something at the Kissimmee Regional that we got 10th at with Tempai Cash Tier, a shameless plug. <laughs> um, it's not bad. I mean, if, if you don't get blown up by hand traps, it's good, I guess. And then you Bell. So, here's my thing with you Bell. To, to end this off, right? I feel that Ubel, once they get Phantom of Ubel, it is definitely a force to be reckoned with. But pre-Phantom of Ubel, I feel like the deck is just irrelevant AF. Like, that's not to say, though, that it's bad. It's just that without Phantom of Ubel, you have the rank 10 exceed that pops, like, 5,000 cards in, like, 5 minutes. And, like, if you don't go first against these other meta decks, I feel like you just kind of fold like a house of cards. And in my testing... Droll and Lockbird is crazy against the deck, because if they start off with, like, I've seen some builds playing a lure. If they start off with a lure and you droll, then they lose. If they go Nightmare Throne to add a card to hand and you droll, they lose. Even if they just go Samsara Lotus into Spirit and Search, like, say, Nightmare Pain, they lose, because now their Nightmare Pain is turned off. Um, in the Tempai, it's actually not that difficult. Um, I've talked about in the past where I've done combo lines where, like, they just have one U Bell monster up, and then I get my Transcend into the graveyard, I bring it back, pop their spirit, they don't get the effect, and I just swing for game from there. Um, so it just depends on how both players open in that regard. Um, again, that's not to say that it's a bad deck, I just think that Phantom of Ubel really pushes this deck to a tier 1 contender. I feel like before that, it, it's, it just gets kind of steamrolled. Like, yeah, I can play Skill Drain, that's cute. It's just like fucking Snake Eyes, like, it's nothing special. Um, as cool as I think this deck is, and as much as I love Ubel decks... Um, I, I just don't think it can keep up when you have so many better options. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Was there any decks that I missed? Like I said, if there's something that I didn't mention or just wasn't in this tier list, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll be sure to get back to you all as quick as I can. Guys, thanks for watching, and I mean, these, these are the decks you got to worry about going into YCS Indie. I mean, I'm pretty much just worried about the stuff in Tier 0, Tier 1. Maybe you Bell and Branded in Tier 2, and Centurion is just a dice roll. You know, it is what it is. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.